ready for another lesson. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Back Row Banter, your favorite casual movie talk podcasts. I'm one of your hosts, Adam Schwartz, and on today's episode, we have some Avatar news, uh, the live action series that is uh, a delay in uh, in our upcoming movie that's only being pushed back a month, but we'll get to that. And then some new details on theater releases for 2022. Uh, to trailer talk, we do not have anything coming this week. We'll get too new to streaming. It's going to be a lighter week to what we're watching, of course. And then our main review for the episode is The Rock. And no, it's not a biopic about Dwayne The Rock Johnson. You gotta figure Although that's going to come at some point, was. right? Yeah. Oh, that that I'm sure there's already one out there that we just aren't aware about. But if not, probably there's, it's coming soon. Joining me today. And as usual, it's Raspberry Nathaniel, Nathaniel Gingrich. What's up, buddy? Oh, hello. That sounds like a very recent name choice you've gone with there. It was. I was typing them out, and I was like, might as well. Might as well just go with the fruit. Little little pre pre podcast fruit talk. Yeah, which you can probably catch after the credits. Maybe we'll see. We'll see. But see, right. I usually try to like tie in. The after the credits scene, or the after the credits, like little banter the with stinger. something that was mentioned in the pod for sure. So, so people get you know that reference back. I also, I should probably apologize. I was listening back to last week's episode. There's about like two minutes of dead air before oh, the post, great. Pro- post pods, <laughs> uh, <laughs> post pod scene. I was tired. I was so tired editing that episode. Sure. It was like one thirty. I had to get up for work in the morning. I was like trying to get it done so fast, and then it just happened. Just roll with it. So, just so uh, you you left it on there for the true fans. Yeah, that too. Because I even turned it off thinking the podcast and that had ended. And then I went back later That's and realized so there was just four more minutes left. <laughs> but hey, it happens. Uh, also joining us today, it's Mango Ty, Tyler Bedalis. What's going on, dude? I love mangoes. Yeah? How, yeah how, how many mangoes do you consume in a week? In a week? Yeah, on average. Or is it seasonal for you, like when there's season? No, you, you it just... If we go out of our way to buy them, they're frozen, so we could put them in smoothies. Okay. Uh, other than that, if we're out anywhere and anything has mango in it, there's like a ninety-eight percent chance we're getting that. Ah, I see. So f- mango, maybe a oh, favorite fruit, but also favorite flavor, like fruit fa- flavor. I'm assuming. Oh, I mean, but yeah, I mean, go 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 hand in hand. But yeah, if we're if we're like out to dinner somewhere and they're like, yeah, we got like mango margaritas. We're like we like mm-hmm. our eyes get really big and we look at each other and we're like, oh my god. And then we both yeah. like like <laughs> the lady, the waitress or waiter is just like, I get it. <laughs> Wait, so Leah is also a big fan of mango. Oh, oh man, she loves it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, they're great. That's fun. So, is it safe to assume your favorite white claw flavor is is mango? Ooh, that's tough because, as I stated earlier, my other favorite fruit is pineapple. Say, it's definitely the mm-hmm. pineapple. And when the mango one, the mango one came out first. That it was did. part of the the original it was, variety. It was part pack. of the OG the OG variety pack. Right? And uh, it's definitely by far my favorite one out of that. And then they came out with this pineapple one, and it hits different yeah, oh, yeah i love good. the pineapple the watermelon's great and the, they have like a blackberry now the black Alleg- allegedly probably. allegedly allegedly <laughs> it's been nine days a you that. haven't tried all the white claws <laughs> oh i have oh trust me I, I, that and then some uh and rounding out the fruit squadron it's big pineapple blake blake holder and oh, is he know. gone? I don't know. The hot spot went down. It's a hot cold spot. spot. <laughs> Must have crashed. Uh, for context here, listeners, Blake's camera's off because his Wi-Fi wasn't working, and he started to just connect his laptop to his hotspot. And so we'll have to see where he's at. Because we're all remote this week because you're back at school. I am back at you school. You guys hear me? Oh, uh, hello again. He's back. Hello? My mic was not plugged in, man. I was talking the whole time. I, I cursed <laughs> on Tyler's mango margaritas. Oh, I did oh, it all, man. man. I accidentally hit the cord. What up, though? Right. What up? What up? How you doing, big pineapple Blake? Uh, I'm good, man. Did not have any pineapples today. 
um today how again how many pineapples would you say you go through in a week um that's tough well to be fair i usually get a smoothie every time i okay. leave the gym um okay and more often than not i usually get one that's like pineapple based usually it's like pineapple apple and raspberry funny enough um shout out nathaniel that's but I'm that's saying. usually i mean that's probably like four times a week so okay that's my that's my pineapple intake fair fair and i i mean nathaniel didn't ask you but do you do you get a lot of raspberries uh when i can yeah yeah it's similar to both kind of like what tyler and uh blake have said too i think raspberry is one of my favorite just like flavors too really so, yeah. I, uh, I i guess that sorry go ahead no you go ahead these, these the discord woes are already getting already oh getting yeah it's us. it's gonna take uh, some getting used to yeah it definitely is uh but it's interesting because like i always just like Oh, whatever fruit I'm feeling that day, I'll go with it because I just love so many different flavors. But it's I, I mean it makes more sense that if you guys you guys have go to flavors. Yeah, I like if I'm like, if I'm at a smoothie shop, go I'll, after those. I'll naturally pick something with a raspberry in it. Similar to kind of okay. like what Blake was saying. Yeah, I mean I kinda look for them, but at the same time I love so many fruits, I'll I'll like switch it Plus, up. Plus raspberry goes so good with ones. chocolate. Mm, that's very true. Can't go wrong there. And you can't go wrong with 45 day theatrical releases for 2022. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> it was a stretch, but we got there. That was one of our best uh, ones yet. Yeah. Uh, so Warner Bros. and AMC have struck a deal to uh, include a 45 day exclusive theatrical window deal uh, for 2022. Whereas in 2021, as we reported on earlier, I, I guess it would have, been, would have been last year, or maybe earlier this year. I think it was very early on this year. But AMC has been releasing all of their movies this year, day and date, uh, on HBO Max with the theatrical release. That's no longer going to be the case in 2022. They're going to go back to kind of the deal it seems like other streaming services have gone with. We talked about this in the past. But 45 days seems to be the new standard, whereas it was kind of 90 before. Uh, so 45 days and then the theatrical window is up. It can go up on streaming services. I'd be interested to see if Warner Bros. tries to just get it up that 45th day. That's kind of what they've been doing i don't mm. know if it's exactly 45 days but like wonder woman came pretty soon after 45 days or after the theatrical release like hopefully they do get it pretty soon get it up pretty soon after that that release window's done because uh, that i think would be ideal but uh we'll have to wait and see yeah i think so um you know it seems to be kind of in line with exactly what you were saying earlier with like the sony stuff and i think some of the disney things as well too so it mm -hmm. just feels like this is kind of the timeline that we're moving into where it's no longer that kind of what we've been talking about in the past it used to be there was movie was in the theater for six months or for you know four or five months maybe you know if it was a big release or you know one or two depending if it was smaller and then it comes out to the video or or dvd or whatever your format would be you know six months later now it's almost like immediately you can just go right to it now so yeah it's cool yeah, I'm excited. I mean, I think that's important for sure with, uh, I mean, with movies coming to theaters. That well, you, all, you satisfy really the streamers exactly. and you satisfy those of us that want to still mm -hmm. go to the movie theater and experience exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah, it, it's, it's, I think 45 days is a perfect middle ground. But I do think it's important because for these monies and these theaters to make money, if it's going to streaming first, it's going to kill these theaters. And I think it's very important that AMC got a deal like this done. Uh, but I, I agree with you, Nathaniel. I think for 45 days sounds very fair for both sides. It's great for the you know for the viewer who can go if they really want to go see it. If not, they don't have to wait too long to wait or to to see it at, on, at home. Like I think that's a, a great little uh, compromise there, and I think it's a good, a good move going forward. I wonder if um, just like the timing of this plays kind of interesting to me. I wonder if Suicide Squad not doing as well in theaters might have like finally put the nail in this plan or something like that where they could kind of yeah. blame it a little bit more on like the the HBO Max release. Yeah, because Suicide Squad's numbers were not nearly they underperformed they they for sure, yeah. And obviously yeah, there's the um, Delta variant kind of thing, but also yes, it feels that's like that's kind of what they're le they're pointing towards, yeah. Yeah, it also feels like maybe, you know, still hbo max or movie theaters there was definitely a choice there that some folks were making mm -hmm. i mean i didn't get a, get a chance to go see it in theaters even though i really would have oh, yeah. i just you know it was an opportunity but like 
people who don't want uh, people who aren't diehard DC fans and people who don't want to spend money, which is, you know, in, during this pandemic, a lot, I think a majority of people like are trying to budget more, maybe going out and spending $24 to go see it with a, a fan, friend or family member, or, you know, I guess 12, 12 or 13 for a single ticket. But like, if you're paying for someone else or whatever it is, like 24 and then snacks, like we go to the movies is not cheap necessarily. Right. It's not like, so if you can just watch it at home for free, it's, it's definitely a deal a lot more people who don't necessarily care as much about going to see it in a theater are going to make. The other thing is to is a commitment to a theatrical window drastically cuts down on piracy. Just like if anything mm-hmm. goes up on HBO Max or, or or Disney Plus day and date, it's just within hours on some sort of rip. So yeah, I'm yeah. sure that's part of it too. Sure. Well, you can... Uh, Get those movies 45 days after release. But a movie you're going to only be able to see in theaters at least a little later than you'd expect it is going to be Venom, Let There Be Carnage. as It has delayed about a month, uh, about actually only like three weeks or so, from September 24th to October 15th uh, due to the rising coronavirus cases with the projected peak being around early September of these new cases. Who knows how long, who knows if that's actually going to be the peak, you know, that, that, that can change it. But... Uh, so with the advent of, of these recent increase in numbers, they are pushing back the release about a, about three weeks or so. It isn't a huge deal. I mean, three weeks is three weeks. It kind of makes sense when you think about it. They want a, as big a crowd as they can with uh, with this with this release because I don't think it's coming straight to streaming anywhere. And like you said, Nathaniel, if uh, they probably saw like Suicide Squad numbers, saw sure. how the Delta variant impacted that, and that that that's probably a big part of why they decided to delay this. They didn't want to be impacted by that either i mean they we noticed i think last week or or maybe the week before that when we saw like the trailers for this it did just say this fall so i think some of this was probably built into you know flexibility in the schedule right now Mm. is still part of their plan um but you know whatever three weeks i think you said it was from september to october now it shouldn't be too crazy i would imagine and you can still kind of sell it as a monster movie quote unquote i guess yeah the other thing they have to consider though is this is getting pushed back to october which is going to feature um halloween kills and Mm -hmm. dune so you got two movies also that they're probably gonna have to compete with in the box office i mean if if i had to guess i'm going to guess they pushed dune back again you think so i'm gonna i'm gonna make an early call here i wouldn't be shocked is that a big, uh, big brain Nathaniel take? I, I don't know if it's big brain or just I don't trust anyone anymore. <laughs> but okay, okay. It, uh, it's definitely one or two of those. What yeah. is Dune slated for? It's like September, right? No, it's October or something. Um, man, if I could type. October 22nd, so the week oh, after. There's still some time. The new, the new Venom date. Yeah, yeah, there's still some time, but then Octo- uh, Halloween Kills is expected to 15th, drop one of those. Right? Yeah, I think 15th. Yeah. So definitely some competition there. October's thing stacking up to be a pretty you know big release month. We'll have to play with our schedule there because we like to do those horror movies in, in October. So that'll be interesting. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Does this mean? I mean, are you guys disappointed at all in this delay? I mean, obviously, it's it's only three weeks. It's not that big a deal, I think, in the in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Uh, no. If it comes out on the same time frame of, if it comes out on the same date of Halloween Kills, I would watch Halloween Kills before it. Yeah, exactly. And if it comes Me out too. The same date as Dune. I'm watching Dune before it. So. Exactly. That's that's why I'm like, oh man. That's the easiest way to say it, man. Yeah, maybe I I feel like first week of October, maybe delaying it two weeks, seeing how that right. plays out. Maybe I don't know. But maybe they thought three weeks was best. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Well, uh, our last news story for the episode here. Netflix's Avatar, The Last Airbender, sets creative team cast for a live-action adaptation. Uh, so the new live-action ne- er, Air- Avatar series on Netflix has its cast. Uh, playing Aang is Gordon Cormier. Or Cormier. Uh, he's, a, he's a 12-year-old. And then there's... Uh, Man, I don't even know how to pronounce her name, but Kai Wentio, and that's all. There's no like last name or anything with that. Is is Katara? Ian Ousley uh, is Saka Dal- Dallas Lou for Zuko. Uh, those are the main four 
and I don't know if there's many much more casting after that, but the article will be released in the, or sorry, the article will be linked in the episode description. If you guys want to, you know, take a look at the pictures of each of the cast members, they do have them on the article. So you can kind of get an idea of what they'll look like and how they'll uh, fit into that character. But I don't know any of these actors and they're all definitely younger, you know, middle teens actors. So it'll be interesting to see how they decide to play this. Yeah, it looks like from what I'm kind of seeing here, all of these guys are do have other credits to their they names, um, just not anything that I've seen so far. Um, yeah. But, yeah, looks good so far. Uh, I'm a little bit worried on the series a little bit. It, uh, it does make reference to the article that the, the original series creators were originally going to be helping out with this or kind of helming this and that they mm-hmm. have since stepped away. So that doesn't breed a lot of confidence in me, especially considering... Exciting creative differences. Yeah, especially considering how the last Avatar uh, adaptation went. But um, we'll see. Give it a shot. Yeah, we'll have to see. Uh, Dallas Liu, who plays Zuko, I guess is going to be in Shang-Chi, according to what it looks like. Yeah, his credits are in Shang-Chi as well. Yep. So we'll have to go see how that turns out. There's no release date or anything attached to this. They just found this cast, so I don't even think they've probably, I don't think they've started sh- uh, shooting or anything, but it's been for in production for, I would say, almost a year or if not more, because this was one of the earliest news articles I remember reporting on was they announced this. Yeah, I yeah. do remember us talking about that, because I think they had just put the series on Netflix or they something had, like that. Yeah, it was, yeah, they put it, the series on Netflix in like last June, I'd say, somewhere, sometime around there. Yeah, Tyler and I watched it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then made everyone I, I else watch it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that'll be it for the news this week, guys. Uh, no trailer talk, so we're going to get into Adam Schwartz's completely subjective new to streaming list for the week of August. Who comes 15th, up with this list? I heard it's completely That's subjective. It is. <laughs> it definitely, definitely is. Uh, as you know, listeners, there's a lot of things coming to these streaming services every week, but only certain things are really worth checking out according to me. So this is the things I would check out and recommend based on what I saw. Uh, to Netflix, we're getting The Chair, which is a dramedy series starring Jay Duplass and Sandra O. Oh. Comes from Game of Thrones creators David Benioff and D.B. Weiss. <laughs> so they went and hmm. did a dramedy. I did not watch the trailer for this. Uh, I didn't have time to, but uh, this is going to be their first thing after Game of Thrones. I don't think they've done anything else, really, have they? Nothing comes to mind. Um, yeah. Jay Duplass and Sandra Oh, I believe both have writing. Oh, I know Jay Duplass does. I want to say Sandra Oh does as well. Both have writing credits. Okay. Um, as well, Jay Duplass is also a director. Um, so they all definitely kind of know what they're doing. Seems like that it's a good crew for them to kind of step in with. Um, mm-hmm. especially considering how everything kind of ended with Game of Thrones, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But I will tell you, and I was kind of feeling this reading the the Avatar news as well. Have you guys just been like completely unimpressed with Netflix kind of recently? A hundred percent. This has been the it's been trending downward for I would say a good year and a half. It just yeah, man. It just feels like there has been nothing that's like like there's been a lot of like true crime stuff that's been pretty decent, and you know obviously. There was, like, the whole Tiger King thing and everything for a little mm-hmm. while. But, man, just, like, the quality of shows that you get out of, like, HBO Max or Apple TV right now is just head and shoulders, it feels like, above some of the stuff Netflix is doing. But, I definitely sorry, agree. I, I would say there are some standouts when I think back at it. I mean, it's just – I think they're, it's just they're not as many hitting as there used to be or as some of the other, well, other streaming services offer because you have, like, Drive to Survive. You, Last true. Dance was – I think Netflix had their toes in Last Dance somewhere. They do. Well, it's it's streaming through Netflix everywhere else except the U.S. Um, okay. True. You're right. You're right. I would say there are definitely big holes. But, like, I guess the thing that also comes to mind is – their library, it feels like, has also just diminished so much because, yes, like, yes. Warner Bros. has taken, obviously, a, a ton of stuff there back for HBO Max. Disney Disney has taken all of their stuff off there. So, like, it just feels so hollow and empty on there now. And the only thing that you're getting is basically Netflix content, it feels yeah. like. No, no, you're definitely right. I, I They had such a strong catalog for so long. 
but then once these you know other streamers started popping up in you know 2017 i mean hulu it was only hulu and amazon prime that it compete with for a while but True. now hbo max now disney plus now peacock i mean there's just only only so many ips and properties to spread across all of these platforms and just it doesn't feel like netflix is retaining a lot of their their ones that people want to see or like good they're not retaining a good solid catalog very interesting to see uh that's it for netflix to amazon prime uh i said la la land last week it was actually it's coming out this week <laughs> not last week but uh little reminder there i've been thinking about that movie recently and i kind of want to rewatch it soon so uh to hulu the hate you give and then to hbo max you're getting reminiscence this is day and date uh in theaters with the, this is the Hugh Jackman and Rebecca Ferguson movie. I don't know if anyone saw the trailer. It was in front of. I think it was the Green Knight. I Overall, this one still feels like it's running under the radar a little bit. I would say. For, yeah. For a a Hugh Jackman vehicle. Right now it has an eight point six on IMDb. I mean that'll change obviously wow, when it comes out high. probably. But I mean that's, that's the bad. early reviewers. It looks like. Uh, the, the summary reads as a scientist discovers a way to relive your past and uses the technology to search for his lost, long lost love, whilst a private investigator uncovers a conspiracy while helping his clients recover lost memories. So, so Inception so, meets the prestige. Sure. <laughs> it's just uh, taking every Christopher Nolan idea and just mash yeah. them into one. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this looks good. The trailer I saw was like, wow, this kind of looks interesting. I'm always yeah. down for new takes and new kind of ideas if they're going to kind of inception with this. Sure. Uh, this is going to be a bit of sizzle, our review for next episode, but we'll talk about Ooh. talk more about that later. Sizzle. Yeah. Sizzle. I'm, Disney. Um, oh, I'm tuned into that. that. That'll yeah. be interesting. I like it. Yeah, like I said, um, I like that trailer a lot. Yeah, man, I'm I'm supporting, I'm standing any woman who has starred in a horror film. So shout out Rose <laughs> the Hat, shout out Rebecca Ferguson. Fair enough. To Disney Plus, Marvel Studio What If, Episode 2. Have good. you guys watched that? I'm, I've not yet. No. no. Flash like forward to what we're right. watching, but yes, I have. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah, you're going to give us, you're gonna have to give us and the listeners the scoop here, Nathaniel. Okie dokie. All right. Uh, also coming to the Disney Plus, Aragon, the Man. original movie, and I saw somewhere that they got the rights and they're gonna make a series out of it. You know I don't what? Remember if that's true, but like eleven-year-old sure. Nathaniel's pumping his fist up and down right now. That's one of the ones I wanted him to actually do right for a long time, but never read them. But they were always very popular with people I knew as a kid. They were really popular with me until someone pointed out to me how similar to Star Wars they are, and then it kind of broke my brain a little bit and made me sad. But they're still fun. And pretty good fantasy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. And then coming to last thing coming to Disney. Uh, yeah, last thing coming to Disney uh, would be the Disney Gallery Star Wars The Mandalorian. Uh, this is the making of the season two finale. They kind of do a behind the scenes of how they finished the last episode. And I don't really. I don't know if we should spoil it, but there's you know there's a there's a reveal at the last episode that took some. Uh, mm some technology let's say and so it's kind of behind the scenes on how they pulled that off because it was an unexpected cameo that they did uh so if you want to check that out get some more behind the scenes on the mandalorian i don't know ty you're the biggest mandalorian fan i know to be honest so i don't know if you'll be checking this out yeah i probably will uh i always think it's very interesting to see how things kind of get made and get that little behind the scenes i've probably watched every single bit of extras that i could possibly find on lord of the rings and uh, I've watched quite a bit on Star Wars uh, stuff, so it's it's already interesting to me, so it's definitely something that I might uh, just pick up. Cool. Well, that's it for the new streaming. Uh, let's get to the what we're watching here, guys. I'm going to kick it off with Nathaniel. What up? I'm Nathaniel. Raspberry Nathaniel. Ra Raspberry Nathaniel. Raspberry Nathaniel. Um. Pretty kind of short list this week, I would say. Uh, I got to the What If episode, episode numero uno. Um, it's kind of no spoilers. I think most people know it. that one kind of deals with the Captain Carter um, What If storyline. So What If is, if you don't know, is this uh, series that's coming out on Disney Plus now. It is animated, um, but it is all of these kind of key moments in the Marvel Universe and What If Something Different Happened 
and what those storylines might look like um, in those kind of different parallel universes. So the first one is what if uh, Steve Rogers didn't get turned into or didn't get the super soldier serum, but what if instead if Peggy Carter did and kind of the spin out from that um, overall. I thought it was promising, but not great. Okay. I thought the um, the animation was 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 kind of rough in parts, but there was some. It had some highs, particularly when they did action that I thought were really cool. But other than that, is some some of the characters still kind of had that like two early two thousands era dead face thing, where like their eyes and their mouth move, but like the cheeks don't or anything like that. You know what I mean? Um, and there was definitely, it felt like a little bit of a, of a gap between, it was weird because they had the majority of the voice cast there, but then they would have like the Sebastian Stan Bucky character who's still voiced by Sebastian Stan, but like falls into this weird uncanny valley valley where it no longer looks like Sebastian Stan. So you're getting his voice, but then they'll have the Steve Rogers, who's a dead ringer for the like skinny Steve Rogers, but have a guy that's not cap not not um Chris Evans voicing him. And so there's this like weird cognitive dissonance that you get where like nothing seems yeah. to match up in some ways. Uh, but overall I'm definitely excited for it. I really want to see the Black Panther ones. That's coming up. Um, I think if you're a Marvel fan, give it a watch. You'll probably still enjoy it. If you don't like animated stuff, then I'm not sure you're going to. And it remains to be seen how much uh, this is really going to tie in at all with the the Marvel Universe at large. Um, but shout out Jeffrey Wright as the Watcher. He's pretty cool so far. And uh, I'm excited to see where it goes. You remembered his name this time. I did. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, I'm. I'm definitely gonna get around to this. I just didn't have a lot of time this past week since I was moving. So yeah, uh, I'm excited to see where this goes. I've heard good things from the people I've heard watch it. Uh, Ty, you're, are you definitely gonna check out? Or are you iffy on this one? No, I probably will. Uh, I've heard some mixed things, but uh, I think overall I'm still like the nerd in me is still peaked. So I'm like, you know, I'm my my curiosities are peaked. So I gotta, I at least gotta do myself a favor and check it out. Sure. Yeah. Blake, are are you ever planning on watching any of these Marvel shows? You know what, man? I don't know. I remember you guys saying you thought Loki was the best one. So, so far, yes. I think if I do any, I'd probably go and start with that. But to be honest, you guys know TV shows is not really up my alley. Yeah. So I don't think I'm really kind of. Uh, I don't think I have a Marvel itch. I think watching Black Widow. Um, Satisfied that for sufficed you? for that, yeah. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I don't even know if I'll watch the um, the newest movie they're they're gonna come. I'm, obviously, if we do it for the pod, I'll do it for that. But I don't know if it has my interest. Where I'll just kind of go watch it on my own. You probably, yeah, you probably wouldn't see it if we don't review it. Yeah. Well, too bad, Blake. Yeah, You're going to see it. <laughs> That's life, right? Yeah, it's like well, I probably wouldn't do that. Sure enough, you end up doing it. So, um. Other thing I got to, uh, Ted Lasso, episode four uh, came uh, out. Um, so I've been keeping up with the season two so far. I don't think we've really talked about this on pod too much yet, have we? We have not yet. Uh, I've been waiting to watch this. Oh, wow. So I haven't seen anything. I kind of want to, because I just flew through the first season. I kind of want to wait until it's all out. I don't know if I could do this week by week. <laughs> um, I've been enjoying it. Week by week, I will say. Um, yeah. I think you're, there's going to be 12 episodes this season, I want to say. So you could, you could go ahead and get knocked the first third out now and then go week by week off. Yeah, just I, might, I might have to do that. Um, yeah, it's great, man. Everyone, you know, the I feel like the world is in a very big Ted Lasso uh, hype right now, which yeah. inevitably yeah. means in about three weeks that like half the world will find something wrong with it and then we're all going to have to hate it for a little bit. But um Right now, I just think the show's just performing really well. Um, they, it's clear they get how to write characters, um, particularly in a show that doesn't really have, like, a clear villain or anything like that. You know, there's no dastardly behind-the-scenes kind of manipulations going on from truly evil people. So um, it does a really good job holding tension besides that, too, you know, of really just kind of making it about 
humans and what our connections are to each other and how those can cause tension for us and how to successfully yeah. get around that. So um, if you haven't, go check out Ted Lasso. You you know, you'd like it. Um, it's fantastic. What else did I get to? Uh, the other big thing, I got to the second Evangelion rebuild. I did not actually get to get to the third or the new one yet. Um, okay. As sad as that is for me to say. Um, but it was always uh, good to, you know, revisit that and uh, and get to go through there. Um, we talked about it enough last week, but I'm excited yeah. for what the new one's uh, going to be for sure. I'm also very excited for this. Have movie. you gotten to start on any of them yet? I've not. You you informed me that the rebuilds were coming to Amazon Prime same they day are. as the finale, the day I was moving in. So I definitely plan on watching them. It's probably this week, like if I can, because mm-hmm. my roommate's seen Evangelion. He hasn't seen any of the rebuilds either, uh, and he loves anime, so he's already agreed to watch it with me, and, and uh, I can't wait to because it's been eight months since I watched Evangelion all the way through. And it's like I'd love to already go back and and dive back in. And and I, it. it's, it's exciting also because it's something. It's Evangelion I haven't seen before, so it's mm-hmm. like I'm I can be watching it. I'll be watching it as like a first viewing all over again in certain in certain ways. Get so, fresh eyes. Yeah, exactly. So I'm I'm very excited to go back in. Like I'm itching to go and watch them. And I I like had to throw on the rock earlier today, and I was like I really just wish I could throw on this first review. Really. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, we'll get around to it. I will probably, honestly, hopefully have all four uh, watched by next week. By next so. week. There we go. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Stay tuned. Um, Other than that, really, I didn't get to a whole lot this week. I uh, kind of, like I said, in past weeks, I've been doing a lot more reading. I did actually a lot of um, watching streaming this week. Uh, I'm sure Tyler can talk about that a little bit, too. But uh, our one of the streamers we watch a lot of, Nick Merckx, has gotten very into apex legends recently and it's been really interesting to watch a person who's very good at video games kind of dedicate themselves to something and then kind of slowly build their way up the ranking process that they have in apex so i i watched a lot of that as well this week and struggle yeah and struggle too yeah exactly it makes me it makes me feel okay about (laughs) about where i'm at my gaming (laughs) Yeah, a very talented, uh, talented gamer. But it's just it's fascinating to watch his, his his mind kind of adapt to it and stuff. It's like as stupid of a comparison as it is. It's like it is watching someone with a high skill level like an athlete kind of like it's crazy. Adapt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that was really it for me for uh, what I watched this week. Tyler, you want to take over from here? Yeah, I can go. Mine's super, super, super short. Um. I wasn't even going to bring up Nick Merckx or anything like that, but uh, I have been really busy this week, so that was actually uh, a big part of my week on just being able to kind of watch that whenever I can. Uh, other than that... Oh, yeah, Tyler uh, and I some more... fixed my huh? car this week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, we put new brakes on Nathaniel's car, so that was pretty cool. Um, sucks, but it's cool. Uh, uh, what else? Oh, I got to Breaking Bad. Leah and I are in the final season uh and then we're gonna go to uh el camino right afterwards so you've been we'll putting see in work when then. we get around to that what'd you say i said you've been putting in work then if you're in the final season already weren't you like season four yeah. last week oh uh, it was only five okay oh well makes yeah. sense and i thought there were six for some reason well wasn't no wasn't season five split into like two halves or something when it was coming out uh i don't remember uh, yeah. that sounds right that sounds about the time that they started doing that with the walking dead too yeah who knows? I could be wrong. I no, I think you're right. So, yeah. And then we watched one movie. Uh, it's called About Time. I've heard that is good. It's a cute little uh, little rom-com, I guess you can call it. It's not really a comedy. It's meant to be a little bit more on the serious side, but there are cute little parts in there. But, yeah, it's great. If, if you need a good movie to watch with your girlfriend, but it also gives you some pretty good deep uh life questions and you know stuff like that then then give it a watch it's really good cool what's that on what did we watch on netflix netflix and what's it called again about About time time. about time it's the one with uh donald gleason and uh rachel mcadams uh 
Which is funny because you guys said, you know, Netflix is kind of taking a dive for you, and that's actually all Leah and I have been using lately. Oh, well, there you <laughs> go. Oh, <wow. laughs> yeah. Just spoke yeah, up earlier before I made a too. fool of myself with my Netflix <laughs> rant, bro. Humble bag, humble brag master's degree guy, just no. looking like an I idiot think, again. It's, just a, it's a seasonal thing, and I think Netflix is just in the off season. They just added more stuff for uh, the Flash and uh, a couple other bigger TV shows that people like to get into. So they did a little bit of a dump, but it's going to be more of a. They're they're going to come back. They're going to swing out with something. They have to. They've been saving up. All right, big call. Mine's that uh, Dune gets pushed back. Tyler says Netflix makes a turnaround. Everyone has to make a big call this episode. <laughs> Uh-oh. Blake, what about you? What have you been watching? That's it for me. Mine, like yeah, I said, man. short, super short. Yeah, um, pretty short for me as well. Um, so I didn't get to too much. I end up watching um, Circle. So that's kind of like a horror thriller movie I caught on Netflix. Which for just a second, one... sorry to interrupt. I shouldn't have. But for the second, I thought you said the Circle, like the reality show on the. That's on Netflix. what I was curious about too. But then I remembered <laughs> that there is that I see the poster for the one he's talking about all the time, and I always yeah, look at I was it like say Nathaniel. It might ring a bell on Nathaniel's uh chart, yeah, but um. So no, unfortunately, listeners, I was not watching the reality um, TV series. What was it called? The Circle? Is that what you said it was, Adam? The Circle, yeah. Um, yeah, no, unfortunately, I was not watching that. I was not watching that, excuse me. So I watched Circle, um, which is a pretty good horror movie, and, and low-budget, cheap Netflix-type joint. But uh, it's pretty cool. The premise to that is there's kind of these people there in this spacecraft type thing they wake up somewhere and there's um this timer that goes off about every two and a half minutes or so and um once the timer reaches zero somebody in this group dies and they're all Yo. standing in a circle um so then they realize that they can vote to to um, select who dies so you can kind of just go through and um so it, it is it like a reality more. show you just watch yeah i mean you, you just kind of watch like that people go through like emotions and, and how people start to like rank tiers through like classism, uh, racism, through gender, age, things nice. of that nature, right? You just kind of, they're kind of trying to realistically solve like, okay, well, this person's old, so we probably should get rid of them. Like, why should they be the person to leave, right? Because mm. they start to figure out only one person can leave um, as it's a game. So that was cool. Just kind of interesting to see um, how the human brain works on that and, and, and stuff so nothing crazy i don't think i'd recommend it to, to ty or adam um i think nathaniel might get a kick out of it um outside of that i watched free guy so i went to the movies on oh. sunday um yeah it's so one i've been up. hearing a lot about yeah man and um i caught that sunday with one of my buddies and it was um it was good i think all of us would like that just being um pop culture video game you know what I mean? Like, that's Ryan. kind of all our lane. Sure. Um, and there, there's so many cameos of that. It's very similar to, like, a Ready Player One, where anybody who's attentive and just aware of those things, like, you'll see a ton of cameos of different movies, different video game characters, and things of that nature. Um, it's Ryan Reynolds, who's hilarious, as we all know. I think he just plays himself in every movie, and it works out, and nobody cares. <laughs> so that, that says enough, right? Um but it's good. It's kind of, I don't know, it raises the question, like, is it a video game movie or not? Because if it's a video game movie, it's probably one of, like, the better video game yeah. adaptations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I don't really know. It's It's got a premise of a video game, but, yeah, I like it. That's good. I, I think you guys should check it out. I, I think you guys will like it as well. Pretty funny. And really quick, I don't know, the director on that is a Sean Levy. I don't know if he's done anything else. Uh, um... So he's been a producer on Stranger Things. He's been a producer on Arrival. And that's the only thing I know. Is that, ringing, is that name ringing a bell to you, Adam? A Sean nah, Levy or Adam Ty? Not yeah, for me. So. Yeah, Nathan okay. Nathaniel stepped away for a second. He might, okay. so, but, cool. but I don't know. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at IMDb. So yeah, that, that's really it. Ryan Reynolds. Um, it's got, funny enough, it's got Channing Tatum in it. It's got what's his name the um 
I always get his name wrong. The, the uh... Oh, it's Joe Keery. He always reminds me of, of the guy who played... Um, of, he always reminds me of Andrew Garfield. I don't know why. Um, but Joe, you guys Joe, know Joe Curie is yeah. So he's he's the um oh, he's the yes. older brother in, in Stranger Things. Yes, no, yeah. I 100 percent agree with you. He does remind me a lot of. Andrew. Yeah, that's who I thought it was for the first like I don't know like hour and a half of this movie, and then I was like, <laughs> oh, that's what he's from. Like then it finally hit me when he said something. Yeah. I said like, that sounds so familiar. So um, yeah, man, it's cool. I like it. That man was um, born in in 92, so he's. He's twenty nine. He does not. He does not look twenty nine. He looks way younger. But I mean, maybe that's just my perception of him because he plays a teenager in Stranger Things. But even looking at recent right. pictures of him, he looks like he's like twenty four tops. <laughs> I don't know. Yes, uh, us ninety two babies yeah, are forever no, youthful. You. Yeah. Yeah. You, you also look like twenty four tops, Nathaniel. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you said that's yeah. that's so off that your was... list, Blake. Yeah, that's all I got too, man. Just those two. Highly recommend Fun Guy. Um, Circled, if anybody's into kind of small budget horror, you, you might get a kick out of that. But sure. otherwise, we'll keep it pushing. Um, what about you, Adam? Yeah, I had a short list this week. Obviously, busy week with my last week of working and then moving and packing and all, all that comes with that. But uh, I've been cruising through How I Met Your Mother on to season six right now. Show's still hitting for me. It's still great into season, uh, season six. Still a lot of good laughs and... Uh, at this point, you're pretty deep into it, and so the character dynamics and the callbacks they have are pretty. You you you're pretty often called back to like past references and stuff, and it's it's fun to be in that area area of the show because you it just get the jokes can get even deeper because of jokes they've had in the past, and they kind of just bring them back. So it's a lot of fun having a good time with that. And then the other thing I got to upon the recommendation of one Blake Holder, I went Ooh. out and watched Nine Days. Ooh, what you think, bro? Dude, I loved it. Yeah, I it's a I loved good it. Movie. Yeah, it was a really, really good movie. You said how you said last week that you made the bull call that it was uh you liked it more than the Green Knight. And I was like, that that's a you know bold yeah. statement considering we had just watched it. But I almost agree yeah. with you. I don't know if I completely agree with you because I had a really fun time with the Green Knight and like it was it was sure, a sure. great movie going experience. Very different yeah. type of film for sure. Uh, but I still had a like this movie was still great to watch. Like I need to check this out. It was right up my alley. Very philosophical. It definitely is yeah. kind of a soul for adults. I think it's a very mm-hmm. apt way to put it. Uh, it kind of deals with like before life stuff, not even after life. It's like before life stuff, which I like mm-hmm. a lot. And and the director was like the directing was incredible in this actually. Uh, the director yeah, it's shot really well. Shot great. Uh, his name is Edson Oda. He hasn't done a lot of other stuff. This is kind of like his big yep. uh, directorial debut for the most part. Uh, but yeah. you know, they they he showed in the trailer. Korean American fellow. Yes, that yeah, that's what I was seeing here on his IMDb page, I believe. But you can see it in the trailer. There's like uh, a lot of TV screens in the movie, but and so you, they cut to mm-hmm. those. That's a big part of the movie, and they cut to the, the footage a lot, and they have constantly have footage going yeah. on in the background. But it's like, it's he must have just filmed all of these you know long pieces of all these different people's like lives that they're they're portraying on the screens and mm-hmm. it's really cool how they cut back and forth and make it a part of the the movie because i wasn't expecting it to be that big of an, a, a part of it but uh i mean great acting great directing it, yeah it's, it's definitely recommend for me it's one i wish yeah. we winston duke's awesome winston duke is great like he he's the lead role there i would love yeah. to do a overview of this movie maybe I don't know yeah. if we'll have times anytime soon in the, in the second yeah, year, dude. but um, maybe sometime down the road when it comes to like a streaming service or something. But this is definitely recommend if you guys want to go yeah. see something. If you liked Soul, if you want maybe something more mature, really? something maybe a little bit more artistic and a true drama, like this was a fantastic movie. It was one I definitely thought about. I don't know if this happened for you too, Blake, but I definitely thought about it for days after I saw it. Oh yeah, like yeah. it's um, it was and not not to interrupt you. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, it's um, I'm I'm one. I'm glad you watched it. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I mean, as I said, I, I figured all three of you guys would, would would enjoy it if you ever sat down and watched it. Um, and to your point, it's it's just eye opening. Makes you kind of sit and, and reflect mm-hmm. on how you view life, and and even going back between Sazi Beat's character. And I I listened yeah. back to the pod last week, and I totally forgot that I did not mention Bill Skarsgård. Is yes. And I don't know how I say that. Um, but 
he's in there all right, just, uh, looking at the difference between his character pre-life and Zazie Beetz's character pre-life. It's kind of like how he would go about in the world with somebody who's like, I don't, I don't want to cut you off. Even yeah. And Hold on, Blake. I don't want to cut you off, but you are cutting out quite a bit here. You sound like, uh, okay. you sound like Craig and G-Arc. Fair enough. Yeah, we got I you did. now. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Cool. Um, but yeah, it, it's cool just to kind of, and, and I don't know if you guys heard me, I, I forgot to mention that Bill Skarsgård is in this mm-hmm. movie. Um, so it, it's really interesting just to kind of watch his character pre-life and Zazie Beetz's character pre-life just, just go and, and, and kind of battle for a position where you kind of see the reality of someone who's super grounded and kind of like, hey, this is how things work. Some things are unfortunate, but that is life. Opposed to somebody who's just the very, um, like, wishing for the best in everything, right? You can, like, we well, you know mm. people like that, and, and there's somebody trying to articulate to them, like, hey, sure. unfortunately, like, there are shitty people, <laughs> right, who may try to take advantage of you, who may try to do these things to you. Um, and, and, like, how do you go about adapting to that? And, yeah, dude, I'm glad you watched it, Adam. That's, like, as soon as you said you watched it, I, I set up. That's, uh, I, th- I, think it, I think both of the other two guys will like it a lot, too, man. Yeah. I, I, I think this is honestly, like, this is an easier recommendation than The Green Knight. Because I did oh, go see I, it. Absolutely. Yeah, I did go see it with two of my other buddies who are, like, like movies, aren't, like, into them like we are. Yeah, and right. I was like, sure. hey, do you guys want to go see this movie? Sent them the trailer. And they did. Yeah, no, they had a good time. They, yeah. I mean, they didn't love it as much as I did. I don't know how much, you know, they were able to. Yeah, exactly. But they were, like. You know, it made me think it was it was a good time. Yeah, they're like, oh, that's it, interesting. A little, you can get sad, but it's you know, overall, I feel like an uplifting movie at the end. It is one where yeah. you kind of like take you take a step back, look at your life, and kind of reevaluate some things, and and it, you know, positively in a in a positive yeah. way. So uh, definitely, definitely recommend. The acting's great, and uh, really kind of want to go back and watch this if I can sometime yeah. soon. Like either that's back awesome, in years or right Roger when it comes to streaming. I think we're um. Even based off the inch list, I don't have my camera on right now because I'm hot spotting off my phone. But I think me and you were like at the same spot in most movies. Yes. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Good to see you, my man. Interesting. Yeah, it, was, it was awesome. Well, that was about it for my what we're watching. Uh, besides uh, The Rock, which is going to be our main review for the episode. Welcome, listeners, who uh, to our main review segment here at Back Row Banter. Nathaniel, can you give them a rundown of how our review segment works? Oh, the way the review segment works here at Backroll Banter is it's split up into two segments. There's the non-spoiler section, and then there's the spoiler section. Pretty self-explanatory. Excuse me. In that non-spoiler section, we'll introduce the movie, go through its IMDb page, kind of give you the cast and everything. Also, our initial thoughts on the movie. We'll go around the circle and each decide, would we recommend this movie, yes or no? Has to be a yes or no, because there is no nuance on the internet. From then on, we're going to move into the spoiler section. I'll play you a sound. It's going to sound like this. And that way, you know to get out if you don't want anything spoiled for you. But really, this movie's pretty old at this point, and... Um, you know, if you haven't seen it, please do go see it because it's awesome. But, uh, spoiler alert. But if you haven't, um, you know, it's a good one to go into, not spoiled. But anyways, uh, if you do want to stick around afterwards, uh, we'll go into deeper thoughts on the movie, um, kind of really dig into our opinions, uh, obviously go over any kind of big spoiler moments. And then uh, if you decided not to go that far, please do come back because we are going to welcome back everyone to see where this ranks on our entropy list, which is our big list of everything that we've watched on the podcast ranked. Adam, do you want to take it away, sir? I would love to. This is The Rock, 1996. The Rock. A different time, a different place, and a different type of action movie. Uh, the runtime, rated R, wow, that... runtime of two hours and 16 minutes. That sounded like the opening to an excellent essay, sir. The year is 1996. Yeah. A different time, <laughs> a different place, a different kind of action movie. I'm That's your host, I'm Adam Schwartz. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be my the first essay I write in my American history or film history class <laughs> this semester. There you go. Sorry, yeah. go ahead, continue. <laughs> no, you're good. No, no, that was funny. That was funny. I'll I'll keep that in mind. Uh, but yes, two hours and sixteen minutes. Definitely on the longer side, and I kind of felt this while watching because mm. it, it just it kind of goes on for a while. Like there's 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 it feels like there's like four or five acts to this well, it's, movie. It's Michael Bay, which we'll be saying a lot today. I feel Michael Bay. <laughs> 
Michael Bay. Uh, yeah, but directed by Michael Bay. <laughs> uh, write it, written by uh, David Weisberg, Douglas Cook, and uh, sorry, David Weisberg is the story credit, and same thing with Douglas Cook. And then Mark Rosner is written, writing the screenplay, starring Sean Connery, Nicolas Cage, and Ed Harris is your main three. But definitely, there's some other actors I don't know who you th- feel like would be most noteworthy. Uh, Tony Todd, David Morse, uh, yeah, definitely Tony Todd. Shout out the man, David Morse, yeah. Uh, Michael Bean, also a, uh, a yeah. pretty big uh, action hero from the 80s, 90s. Yep. So, good cast all around, for sure. Um, the IMDb summary reads as follows. A mild-mannered chemist and an ex-con must lead the counter-strike when a rogue group of military men, led by a renegade general, threaten a nerve gas attack from Alcatraz against San Francisco. And according to IMDb, is actually airing tonight. So, folks, if you're listening, you missed it. It was on last night. But um, on where? There you go. <laughs> AMC apparently. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. You, maybe, maybe a listener here watched it. I hope you did. And I hope you enjoyed, uh, as I enjoyed. This is uh, this was a fun time, man. This is the, I, your first time seeing this, correct? This is my first time seeing this. Just watched it, honestly, right before we recorded, because like I said, I was busy all week and unpacking and stuff. So I waited, waited just the last minute, minute, but I did get it in and um, had fun. Watched it with my roommate. We kind of just put it on and and uh, just we're, we're riffing on it. I mean, it, it's just it's a fun 90s action movie. There's not much more yeah. to say, but it's a good fun action uh, fun action movie and Sean Connery and Nicolas Cage. We were talking about this. Two of probably the most like impersonated actors there are. That's a good point. Like a Sean Connery in- impression and a Nicolas Cage impression are two very common ones. People you'll hear people try to you know riff on, and they're they're acting together in an action movie with great lines. Like we were going through this movie. This movie has probably just as many, if not more, quotables than the first Fast and the Furious. Oh yeah, it's um like so, so many one li- great <laughs> one liners that I could just pull out. It's supposed or it's it's rumored that uh Tarantino did occasional uh dust ups on this one and uh spruced up the oh, dialogue okay, a little right. bit. But um yeah, there's definitely it's definitely got a tone. It's definitely got a a a style that it's going for, I would say overall. Um and there's a part of me that just goes they don't make them like this anymore. You know what I mean? Like that they kind of that. like hard r action rating not a hard r but like but more more a soft r if anything like action rating yeah. movie mm-hmm. that's just a roller coaster from start to finish that you know like the thing you kind of come close is like a fast and furious but like even then it's not in the same vein you know it's um yeah. it's a good one i like this one a lot this one's a it's a total dad movie as tyler would say fuck yeah for sure Ty, what are uh, your thoughts? Thanks, yeah, uh, I mean, I'm in on this. Uh, like I said, I've I've de- I've seen this before. I wasn't sure. I, I couldn't quite put it together until I got like literally probably like a minute in, and I was like, oh yeah, yeah, it's coming back to me now. And yeah, this is like a movie that your dad or your, like your older brother would just show you. But uh, I mean, action heroes, Nicolas Cage, Sean Connery. It's Ed just, Harris. It's it's a go to for me. So it's gonna make me want to watch more stuff like this. It's gonna make me want to go back like Heat and shit like that. Yeah. Blake. But yeah. I'm gonna recommend. Yeah. Um. I'll, I'll go ahead and follow up. So yeah, this was my first time watching this. Um. And I was pretty sold. I mean, I've seen a handful of kind of '90s actions, and 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 me and Nathaniel were kind of talking pre pod, and I just love the score on this mm, um yes. it's, it's so 90s to me and that's when i was talking to nathaniel and, and ty as well for that matter and i was like hey like did did um michael bay do like the first bad boys um and they i think he did the first two right he Pardon did yes i don't want to give the wrong information um and i was like yeah that makes sense because this reminded me so much of the first bad boys just like the way things are shot and just how it looks and i love that movie so like yeah dude i was sold i like 90s action um, like he's like, like Daniel said, they just don't really make action movies like this anymore. Um, I don't know if it's a time period thing or, I or feel what, like, yeah. but I wonder it's if weird, man, they don't, they're, they're way more, 
how do I put this? They're almost way more like action heavy now and not as deep in like character development. Right. Um, I, or even like not even necessarily as like as entertaining. Like, you know what I mean? Like the action may be entertaining, but like the actual film and, and, and just how it's viewed by the viewer, it's not as entertaining. So I wonder I if know. Marvel has kind of like you know. cut into that like area a little bit. I'm sorry, too. What was that, bro? I wonder if, like, the Marvel superhero movie has kind of cut into mm-hmm. that, like, genre or, like, that viewership that used to be there for movies yeah, like yeah. this. You know right. what I mean? Sure. Yeah, you might be onto something. I didn't think of that. We, we kind of glaze over the fact this is a Hans Zimmer score. That's what I thought it was. Yeah, I was double-checking because it said it in the credits, and I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I definitely kind of noticed it watching it. it Cause, yeah. I forgot to mention on the IMDb page. But, yeah, uh, Hans Zimmer score. But Even, you definitely, you definitely notice like the music in this is great. It's it, it matches the tone of every single shot. You kind of get you. It has your get hype moments from, and it, it comes from the music mainly. Uh, it, it's it was a lot of fun, and I think the music was a huge part of that, as it is in most. I mean, most good action movies are going to have some good music to go along with that. Yeah, I think uh, we were watching it, and Waz turned to me. He's like, "Why does this sound like Pirates of the Caribbean?" And I was like, "Because this actually got a score. It's not just some remixed like rock yeah. song from the '80s set under sad music for effect." I'm looking at you, Zack Snyder. It's and I'm glad it's not like some digitized music that would totally be in a '90s movie mm. like this. Like, you well, this, at, like, is, this was still a pre-Matrix world. You forget. Yeah. So it was right before that. So I'm glad it wasn't any of that stuff because it, it definitely fits so well for this movie. And if it was different, I would be so upset. Another thing I, I watched and noticed while kind of looking at this before we, we can talk about before we get into spoilers is just it's all practical, basically. Like everything yeah, you, you can, can tell, tell is just, yeah, is, is shot on set or in camera, basically. And um, some of it looks great. It, 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 it still holds up, man. Mm-hmm. I think there is something to like these this era of like the action excuse me the action hero that is like put it, it's a normal man put into an insane situation but then everyone in the movie is just selling that 150% like everyone in this is committed to the roles that they're having uh, you know oh, even yeah, though you've got so you've, much fun you've got Nicolas Cage and Sean Connery two of the biggest scenery chewers like in Hollywood ever but everyone else in the cast is just right there with him too going blow for blow yeah. with them so I think this movie's just really fun um I think I, this was your recommendation it was yeah it, it felt like a summer popcorn flick and like to me I when I think back on like those kind of 90s movies this was one that always stuck out to me as kind of like a cut above you know it's it's the best Michael Bay movie in my opinion um at least that I've seen so far so yeah yeah who knows what he's got up his sleeve for the next uh, Transformers movie we didn't even really talk about the plot all that much if you're non-spoiler section but oh yeah we didn't really talk mm-hmm. about the, we didn't even rate the IMDb summary. I kind of just skipped over the pot because that's the, uh, probably the best IMDb summary we've gotten so far. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, that's a great one. So uh, that's probably going top of the list. Uh, I don't know, very tip top, but it's definitely top five. Um, but yeah, we can kind of go over it some more. Uh, uh, Nicholas Cage pl- plays a FBI uh, chem- chemical specialist. He's yeah, kinda like a kind of like a bioweapon specialist almost. Uh, and then he is called in when Ed Harris's character is holding a bunch of people hostage on Alcatraz Island with the threat of releasing a nerve gas uh, over the city. And so they call in Nicolas Cage, of course, but they also need help getting into Alcatraz. And so they call up ex-con Sean Connery uh, to get in because he's the only one who's ever gotten out. Successfully. As they'll say. Yes. Um, so it's a fun setup, it, you know, insane plot, great. but it's awesome. Insane <laughs> plot. And it, it, yeah, it's, it's so much fun. It's so over the top. I got some very anti-bureaucratic tones to this movie. They're very mm-hmm. anti like bureaucracy. And I don't know if maybe that was just more of a time in the nineties, especially during this is right before B- Bill Clinton's administration. So, or right during in the middle of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is 96. Yeah. So, uh, definitely some, some anti-bureaucratic tones here, but. A lot, a lot of fun. Uh, this is definitely recommend for me. I don't know about you guys. Recommend for me. Yeah, recommend. Absolute. Yeah, so if you haven't seen this, you can find it on YouTube for free. A bit of sizzle. I don't want to link this in the description for fear of uh, backlash, but if you guys just search uh, The Rock, 
movie 1996. Yeah, I'm sure you'll find it somewhere. Allegedly. Uh, yeah, allegedly. Uh, we didn't point you that direction. Don't don't don't, don't come back to for but, us. But uh, anyway, uh, we're gonna go ahead and hop into spoilers here. So if you've not seen The Rock and you do not want it spoiled for you, go ahead and check the episode description where it is linked to. Uh, or where I've put a timestamp you can jump to. Sorry, I was writing down a timestamp and just messed me up. Uh, where you can see the timestamp and over spoilers, and you can join us for our ranking upon the entropy list. Spoilers. Did Shit you play the music? goes down. Yes, did I you did play, play the now? music. Oh, it didn't come through for me. What a shame. Uh, Shit goes down. Shit goes down. On The Rock. The Rock. The Rock. <laughs> this was fun, man. This was fun from beginning to end, honestly, for me. Dude, how good is that? Um, is the opening Nick Cage introduction sequence with the with the bomb and the baby? I completely yeah. forgot about that yeah, thing. It's good. so good. It's so ridiculous, but it's it, it is ridiculous as it is. It's like actually. There's a lot of tension there. Yeah, they There's totally. Yeah, there. they totally get oh, you awesome. to to buy in that for some reason the FBI just has this weird cone room that you <laughs> go into to defuse part- possible gas bombs, and it's just in the same building as everyone else. <laughs> like, yep. Just FBI headquarters, right next to the director's office. But you totally <laughs> buy it, and it's great. It's so good. Yeah. There's a lot of things you just have to buy into on this movie. Oh yeah, and it, I, you know what? I have no trouble doing so. Yeah, it is cheesy as shit, but it is it yep. like it wears its heart on its sleeve. It really does. Yeah. Um, what do you think about the theory that that Sean Connery is actually his James Bond character, which is a, a persistent rumor with this film? That would be amazing. And it yeah. actually it actually kind of fits. Yeah, it does. It does. That's a pretty yeah. big, uh, they, pretty they big say internet yes, theory. Yes, but yeah, you know, they really. That would be amazing. Uh, this is honestly one. I think I've seen Sean Connery in like one other thing. Maybe League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. <laughs> maybe I don't know. But like, this is one Great of my movie. first movies I've seen him in in a long time. Um, so it was fun seeing him. And I guess same thing for Nicolas Cage. I really. You know, I've seen a lot of, I would say, a good amount of Nicolas Cage movies, but I haven't seen anything in a this, while. Yeah, this so is like, peak Cage, too, I feel like. I was about like. to say, and this, this is, this yeah, is kind of him, him in his prime, so this was a lot of fun. And uh, th- like I said, the writing in this is just so good. It's so, like, bad, but it's so good at the same time. Like, oh, yeah. I, I'm I'm in on all of it. Like, this is like a this is like a cliche action movie. Like, this is a, like, I, it doesn't get, like, any, you know, better than this as far as action movie goes really it, it, like, it's the it's, popcorn it's, kinda, flick. it's a little run of the mill but it's like very yeah. good in, in what it does that's why it's in the criterion collection little fun fact for you out there yeah it may come up at a trivia at some bar at some point but yeah i'll keep that in my back pocket what did you think of the action uh we kind of we've talked about how this movie knows it, it's what it is and, and it's it's an action movie but i thought overall it's shot really really well you know michael bay always gets a lot of really good um support from the military because he often so often features them in his movies so i thought there was really kind of interesting seeing the marines versus navy seals kind of aspect to it yeah. and obviously we get the first uh the introduction of the gulag from from call of duty in this uh, yeah that's funny okay. that uh, a lot of people don't uh think that like that they're like that's a rig that's original design by call of duty that's not <laughs> <laughs> well call that's of duty not. has always pulled from uh, several influences i would say overall a lot of them yeah. filmic and i think this just definitely happens to be one of them too but uh um, i mean the gulag is just so recent too that i think people are like oh <laughs> right. <laughs> Good motivation for the Google log. The gouge. Uh, love the uh, the car trace scene down the streets of San Francisco with the uh, yeah, Humvee Ferrari versus Ferrari. The oh yeah, with the Ferrari. Yeah. Where it's just, and so that's what that's what picked me. I was like, dude, this is so much like Bad Boys. Oh and, sure. Because um, in the first one, he has the he has the Porsche. Okay. Um. And that's when I was like, dude, this looks like this reminds me so much of something. And I couldn't figure it out. And and, and that's what it was. So, yeah, I love the, I, not to interrupt briefly, but yeah, I, I like this movie. I was sold, man. I love the shots of Nick Cage. Just like it's cut to him in the car and him just clearly just jerking the wheel in one direction. And then immediate cut outside of the car as someone else 
clearly is driving the car and like drifts it around a corner but it's just that <laughs> yep. great 90s like this is just how we did it back in cgi wasn't yeah. a thing you had to cut between everyone and try and hide it it's great they do their best oh yeah it's awesome it, yeah it's, it's just fun man it just feels so tactile i feel like in that way like you're almost aware it's a movie and you're aware it's a set you're aware it's stunts but it's done so well and so just kind of like yeah, brashly. You don't, you don't care. Yeah, you're just along for the ride. <laughs> right, right, right. Is there a worse way to die than VX gas? No, I don't think so. It's it's definitely up there. Um, yeah, some brutal kills in this movie. There's, yeah. There's, there's a VX gas. There's the... Uh, the, dude falling on the spike. The air conditioner <laughs> to the, the to air the conditioner, head. and then Sean Connery just snaps a man's neck. That is true. Like, he know, throws like, a knife through brutal. a man's throat at <laughs> one <laughs> point. Knife through his throat. Some brutal fucking shots, man. Uh, one one like, man is speared with a rocket that takes off from yeah, rocket. No, I I saw that dude when he looks at the control panel. Yeah, I, like, lo- I, like, you get that great up. framing like, shot. No way, <laughs> no way, this is about to happen. Uh, yeah. It's just it's a yeah. cheeseburger of a movie. I don't know. It's it feels like yeah. how much how deep do you want to delve into this kind of thing? You know, it's it's one of those ones where you just kind of go, man. It puts a smile on your face for the whole time, and uh, mm. you know, enjoy the ride. Yeah, yeah. Good time for sure. Blake, Ty, do you guys have anything else you guys want to add on here? Non or in spoilers? Um. I would say just for starters, not even it doesn't have anything to do with the context of the film, but I'm surprised I haven't seen this before. Both, I've both seen you it, guys like I said, a decent amount of '90s films, yeah, especially like '90s action. Both so you guys I don't surprised know how me. this just never popped up on the radar. But had your dad heard um, of it before or anything? Like, did you watch it with him? I did not watch it with him. So I'll, you know what? I'll actually run that by him probably tomorrow. Um, oh, it was my turn to go. Maybe. Nice. You might have to restart what you were just saying. Nathaniel cut out here. Yeah, we just lost Nathaniel, too. I see it on screen. I should be back. The um, The mixer didn't go, though, so uh, you may probably have to cut that a little bit, but I think we'll be okay. I already have the timestamp down, buddy. Boom. Uh, go on with what you are saying there, Blake. Um, you were saying you were going to ask so your dad. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll have to ask Pops what what, what he thinks. Um, because I caught this today after work on an undisclosed viewing device. For as, sure, <laughs> kind of discussed. Um, but I he kind of disclosed went... that undisclosed. <laughs> oh, okay, we'll, sure, we'll bleep sure. it out. Um, but uh, I I didn't watch it with my dad today. He went to the Sox game, White Sox. Ah, uh, gotcha. Um, shout so out Sox. I'll, shout I'll run out. that by him tomorrow and see what he thinks. Um, I'd be surprised if he hasn't seen it though. Yeah. I want to watch this with my dad. Is I kind of want to do the same. Is that who you saw it with uh, first, Tyler? Surely, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was like this, Red Dawn, mm-hmm. uh, Twister. Twister was a big one. Can I get like Especially a... like out here in the Midwest. They were like, anytime there was a storm, dad was like, Tur- turn it on. Turn it on, <laughs> Twister. We got to get on, it. Twister. <laughs> right, right, right. Did you see the cow? So, no cow. Same cow. <laughs> Unreal. My dad calls like every windstorm an F five. That's so funny. And I'm like, I'm like, what are you doing? Awesome. Like, what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> it cracks me up. Uh, Adam, has Papa Schwartz seen this one? I feel like this has to be on his list. He didn't really. It didn't ring a bell for him when I mentioned. It's so funny. It was. Dang. Do you That's think surprising? So. Yeah, I feel like people remember Con Air before they remember The Rock. And I or feel face like off. that. Yeah, I feel like both of those might okay, take yeah, a little I've, bit of I've that. seen Face Off. Yeah, That's I Nicolas also, Cage too, right? Yeah, yeah. both of those. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't really know if this might like right up my dad's alley. Like, I'm sure he kind of likes these movies, but I don't know if he like loves these over the top action movies. I, you know, he probably likes Die Hard. I think he likes Die Hard, but like, I don't. Know, Papa Schwartz, let me know. <laughs> I know you're listening. <laughs> yeah, let us know. Send us an email. Actually, he might not be listening right now, and not spoilers or in spoilers talk. So we'll see. But uh, I can I can find out for sure because he didn't really seem to recognize it when I mentioned what we were watching this week. Oh <laughs> man! All right. Well, uh, any other uh, thoughts here, guys? I mean, what was your guys' favorite like sequence here? 
I really yeah. enjoyed the the bomb baby at the beginning. Really? I was, uh, yeah. yeah, because I I, I remembered I, that. I remember the assault obviously on Alcatraz and everything. I haven't seen this movie in probably ten years at this point. I just remembered loving it. So this was this was also a little bit for me a recommendation. But I was a, I had like a moment last week. Where I was like, oh no, is this going to be another Boondock Saints where it's just aged horribly? But luckily, within like the first five minutes, I was like, "Oh my god, we're safe. We're good, guys." <laughs> like this movie rips still, so yeah, we're fine. So um, but yeah, I think that I completely forgot about that scene, and and just watching it again, it was like this gets so intense so fast. It puts you in a mood. It tells you everything you need to know about the character. It's shot really well. Um, I really enjoyed that that moment. Yeah. No, th- th- like I said, that that I I even turned to my roommate and said that I was like as corny as those lines were in that scene, and like as He's funny got- as that scenario kind of was, they do such a great cho- job in such a short amount of time of building the tension in that scene to make you actually like, oh my god, wait, actually like, what's so going I don't on? I don't think I could do the needle the needle in the heart. Like oh, I, I, I either. I was about to. I was like, I don't blame this dude. Like, it's eating yeah, my like, You see how big this needle is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, we were talking about it. Nicholas Cage definitely punctures a lung when he stabs himself. Don't that was even way worry too about low it. below his heart to for him to like be alive. I don't even right know now. if I could get my heart on the first time. Like I don't think I. I think I would miss. I, yeah. Oh, I. I hundred percent. If someone wasn't like drawing an X on my chest and where I got to insert, Tyler, I, I believe I could, could get it. Up. I would I have could to, probably hit it. I, I would. I would just be like doing the thing where I'd be like sucking my gut in to try and see where my heartbeat was, <laughs> and, like going off of that. <laughs> I guess that's the best way to do it, but do you have time to like look? No, down your not shirt with, not like when it, yeah, shirt? I got the rubber the, suit not with going. The gas, <laughs> yeah, not with the suit going, not with the gas all over you. Blake, can Man. you take that shot? Nah, no, no way. No. <laughs> He's like, no, I'm out. <laughs> that's hard. Yeah, that's hard to give to yourself. Maybe if like someone could. I think that's the thing, right? You got to get like you got to make a, a death me. pact with someone. Yeah, and you both just that's hard. Michael Myers, it. Yeah. Uh Ty Blake favorite sequences. Um I'm with Nathaniel just in terms of that that opening scene. Um that caught a lot of attention to me and as oh, this is this is this is good and that's kind of your introduction to Nicolas Cage character and and everything of that nature. So yeah. That that's my that's my biggest one. The car chase is probably a close second though. Just cuz I said it reminded me of Bad Boys. Mm. Which have you seen Bad Boys, Adam? I have not. Bro. Mm. I I've seen we get through we get to in February for a uh, little Black History viewing. I've seen either mm, one or two, and I can never remember which one it is that I've seen. So, the first okay. one, um, as we've kind of gone on, is is very similar to this, where it's just like super nineties. Yeah. Um, There's the one second that, like, one ends is, in a warehouse, and that's the one. I've yes, seen. yeah. The first one ends in a warehouse. Okay. Yeah. The second one ends in like I don't know. They're like in fucking Bolivia. Or okay. Like then it's, it's definitely the first one but, I've seen. Okay, yeah. Second one's pretty good too, though. So it, it's True. a little bit more funny. Okay, I think that's where they really get into their characters, right? Um, of Will Smith being like a obviously really famous actor at the time, as well as Martin Lawrence, where they're big comedy figures, but still a lot of action. What did you guys think of the villain in this as Ed Harris? Do you, you know he's got a pretty justifiable like reason for what he's doing, which I think is interesting. But obviously, he's doing a horrible thing. I feel like that was a pretty cut, good, like cut above your normal action hero. Yeah, hero especially villain. for like '96. You know, there's there's some big pieces there, but that actually brings me to the last question uh, on like my favorite scene. His mine's probably the the mutiny of the mutiny that happens mm. uh, at the end, and uh, his mm. team is like, well, you know, we were actually like, you know, hired for a job, and we actually want the money, and he's like, well, we had a job. They called our bluff. Job's done. Yeah, he actually doesn't uh, want to kill right. thousands of people. <laughs> right. uh, so yeah, I, I actually that's actually probably my my favorite scene out of the whole thing is you kind of get to see everything wrapped up really nicely, and you get to kind of see that that turning point, and he realizes obviously he's not here to kill people. He was just trying to get money for families that that he obviously cared about, and so yeah, Tyler, you're definitely right, and I, that was something I was going to mention was like his 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 drive is i feel like pretty justified but also it, it kind of backwards where he's like 
kind of mad about how all these people died in vain, but then he's going to go out and murder innocent people. But I, I'm very happy with the fact that he like admits later and comes around. He's like, I was bluffing the whole time. Like, obviously I wasn't probably going to do this. And I'm glad that they had that turnaround there. Yeah. I like that. They, they start the movie with his motivation where you get Mm -hmm. like immediately. He's like, I'm sorry for what I'm going to have to do. This is like, you know, they haven't listened to me kind of thing. And so then you immediately know what his big conflict is and why he's doing what he's doing. Yeah. And uh, I think that works better than, like, you know, introducing it super late or something like that. Rather, than, like, if the movie just started with the assault on Alcatraz and then, like, we had to spend 45 minutes with the, just thinking he's a madman and then we get his, his demands and the reasoning why. And then I don't think that that other turn, Tyler's favorite scene, would play as well. I think it's a pretty smart because they make that choice early on to have his motivations clear from the start. Uh, really Facts. helps the audience kind of sink into that a little bit more. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, my favorite sequence is probably going to be, I mean, it's a pretty harrowing scene, but when, when the Marines are in the gulag and, he's, mm. and he kind of has to come with the grips, like he obviously doesn't want to, have them open fire but like they have no problem doing so like, that good. was kind of a harrowing scene because they're obviously they're kind of the same side like you, you they're right. on the same team but all they're all sir Marines you know i cannot military. give that order yeah <laughs> like great yeah that delivery too that back and forth like really kind of he really uh, nails like, that like the military guys like it is like every i like that they're always like he this is the general you want to be like he is yeah. the man and like everyone's like even though he's doing crazy shit they're like hey hey He's still the man. You gotta like yeah. give him some yeah, space. So <laughs> yeah, they play him up so well. Yeah, this movie's just so fun all around. Like as far as that goes, this is definitely one of the better ones I've seen. Well, do we have any other closing thoughts here, gentlemen? I think uh, I'm I really, ready. I really like the shot with the after the after he puts the shot of atropine in his heart and the then flares. he's on his knees with yeah. the flares. Oh my god, yeah. it's, it's classic. Yeah. <laughs> It is a good one. I've, that's that's on so many like dorm room posters, like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or uh, how they have like all the green screens for like anything that's like a night vision camera, oh, yeah. or like anything that's like <laughs> yeah. a an aiming Viper system, like a radar dick. system, everything <laughs> yeah. just like lime green LEDs, and it's all eight bit. And oh, I, I love, love too, the the VX gas and those weird globes that's all green and everything. Yeah, I want to like, eat that. I want to eat it. Yeah, that's the Tide yeah, Pod syndrome. My roommate, my, <laughs> my roommate was like, "What do you think they made those with? Like Dawn soap and green dye?" I think, like yeah, that. probably. Yeah, <laughs> they, they had cool designs though. And then I think my favorite like little one liner is like right when they're about to drop out of the helicopter and she's like, He can't even scuba dive and then he just uh dives into the water with all those guys. <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorites is probably what do you have? A water pistol? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So many good one liners, dude. Yeah. Oh, Campbell, so why don't you cut me some slack? <laughs> So what in the name you. of Zeus's was it, butthole? Um, yeah. <laughs> was it you, game? Adam, who said that this has um, uh, a matchable, quotable count, I guess you can say, for the original Fast and the Fears? Is that what yeah, you said? I oh, man. Think so. yeah. we're, we're missing oh, yeah. the number one, which is losers always whine about doing their best. <laughs> yeah. Winners go home like and winners fuck, go the prom like queen. fuck the prom queen. Or Carla was yeah, the yeah, prom yeah. queen. <laughs> I love that. the response yeah. to. Yeah, that's a super just '90s line. Oh man, it's you know what I mean? so it's like, good. That's funny as hell. It's like your dad it. telling you to rub some dirt on it. Yeah. <laughs> so much fun, dude. The Rock is yeah. a tourist attraction. <laughs> we could keep going. Oh uh, yeah, I, it's, I, it's it's so yeah. good. More than the yeah. original Fast and the Furious, though. I don't know. I if think I so, could. dude. I, I maybe because yeah. it's longer too, but like true, like I said true, before, these, these two actors and their, their their delivery of lines is so iconic and it's riffed yeah. off so much that hearing them just given this these this genius material for them to say and they don't <laughs> even have all the lines, but like I don't know the writing of this was just so much fun and having them deliver it in the way they did, just yeah. great, dude. It just matched up so you. well. All right, well, I think that's going to be it for the spoiler segment here, I guys. So. so welcome back, listeners who skipped over the spoilers of the pod, spoiler segment of the podcast. We're going to go ahead and rank The Rock up upon the entropy list. Up upon. Four. Up upon. 
those of you who do not know, the entry, entropy list is Backward Banter's official list of every movie we have reviewed, regardless of genre, regardless of anything else, all on one fantastic list. This is essentially how we rate our movies, rather than do out of five stars, out of ten, whatever it is. We go ahead and rank the movies up on one list and see how they compare to one another. If you'd like to reference the entropy list for yourself, you can do so by checking the episode description where it is linked to my letterbox. The Rock, 1996. I feel like the most apt comparison here on this list is we often kind of put them up against is Die Hard, of course. Mm-hmm. The only other kind of action movie of that era on I'm here. The same thing. And it's really hard for me. It is, isn't it? That, it, it I, I'll be honest, comes close for me. I think this so too. Like, like Die Hard's not a classic, or Die Hard's a classic. Like this isn't a classic, but at the same time, like I can't help but feeling this is almost on par with Die Hard because you have some good one-liners, you know, Hans, Gooby, <laughs> Hans, like, all of those, Gooby. <laughs> yeah, like you have some good one-liners. You have great action, and but and you have Alan Rickman, which is uh, probably the the third most impressioned person there is. <laughs> yeah, also true. Yeah, so. I don't know. Nathaniel, who has an idea of where they might put it? Because I don't right now. Yeah, I think um, I think on the personal list, I got this above Die Hard. But I think on this list, just I think I go 36. I think that's just that's where it is. Yeah. I think I like having it there as a one-two punch with Die Hard. Um, it's definitely above Black Widow for me. So, right, And then I right. look, too, and I go like The Conjuring 2, which... Yeah, I mean, again, could be arguable with this one. Pretty good as well. But then I think it runs into Frozen Strangers Halloween 2018, which just for me are are the kind of just that one step above. Like this this one's pretty awesome. We've done a lot of praising of it today. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think just 36 is where I'm at. All right, fair enough, fair enough. I would say... I'm probably going to slot it at 39 below the notebook above Tenet. Okay. Uh, and we should clarify, 36 is right below Die Hard, right above uh, Black Widow. Yes. Um, but 39 for me, I think The Insidious, The Notebook, Black Widow, those are all movies I probably liked and enjoyed more than this one. And the thing that brings this one down for me is the runtime. Two hours and 16 minutes definitely felt long. And I part of it was probably just the directing of michael bay and and you know just like i said it felt like it had like five acts to it Do you and they f- could they could have cut some out and made some plot uh, choices differently that shortened it but do you think you'd feel that way if you weren't like knowing that you had the podcast later today too and knowing you were trying to squeeze it in that definitely could be part of it yeah that definitely could be part of it like and, I, uh, I definitely noticed the runtime. I think to the end a little bit but maybe not as much as as it never became a a, a thing that i was like oh, okay I'm, I'm i'm ready to be out of this one for me that yeah then no that's a fair admission i, I should probably you know kind of kind of put out there because i was kind of watching the clock like this hopefully ends like and i have time for the podcast it was kind of that close to it mm. got on like right around eight so it was good but uh you're right i think i was watching the clock a little bit too much and that could definitely be part of it and so that is skewing it maybe a little bit for me but regardless i still kind of stand by that 30 oh, yeah. ranking no no uh, issues I, with your ranking yeah yeah so uh, Blake, Ty, either you guys have an idea where you're going to rank it? I think I'm going to be right with Nathaniel at 36. Okay. Uh, I think this is just, it's really hard, but I think Die Hard is just so much more memorable. Uh, and I think it's almost one of those things that's like an instant classic. You say Die Hard, people know what you're talking about. You say The Rock, there's still a majority of people that'll probably know what you're talking about. But it doesn't come to mind as easily as Die Hard does. Damn you, Dwayne Johnson. I will say, I'll let you guys know, I don't think anyone in my generation really knows this movie. Which is crazy well, to hope, me. I hope you try. pass it on. Like, I am going to try. Yeah. It, it's just, it is just feels like that kind of one of those forgotten ones in some ways. I don't, yeah. know, I don't know what happened with it. I don't know. You need, this is why you're here. An advocate for your this generation. Is this is true. Yeah, I try, man. You're Listen, the bridge. Go out and educate the, the masses. The future of our nation. <laughs> it comes <laughs> down to right. you. 
Show them the rock. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll grab a I'll grab like a fi- I'll grab the five dollar version out of the bargain bin at Menards. There you go. Go on a hill and that's all I ask. It, yeah, put maybe I'll get a projector and just start playing it on campus. <laughs> uh, like Blake, that. where's your ranking at here, man? Um, kind of with all you guys, I think we're on the same area. Um, I don't like it above Die Hard. Um. It's tough. I think I do like it more than Black Widow. It's it's kind of hard to decide, but then I look at Insidious, mm. and that kind of throws me off. Sure. So I think I actually want to go with 38, which would be one below Insidious, and one, one above Insidious. The Notebook. One above The Notebook. So it would go Die Hard, Black Widow, Insidious. The Rock. So we got one or two for 36, one for 38, and one for 39, correct? Like the middle ground here would be 37. Which would be above Insidious, below Black Widow. Yes. We all cool with that? I feel like that's the best middle ground. Fine with me? Yeah, I'm cool with that. Blake, tie. Blake? Yeah. Or, okay, Blake's yeah. good, tie. Cool. As long right. as we shout out Florence Pugh every time we say Black Widow. <laughs> of course. That's my that goes. From now on. Yeah, no, that goes without saying. Florence Pugh is the best. All right, well, The it's Rock. Cool. Slotted in at 37, below Black Widow, and above Insidious. We now have 65 entries Ayo. in the entry list. We'll have to do a double up some week and, and get another movie on there so we catch up to the episode numbers. So that was fun when we had that for about five or six weeks. <laughs> Soon. Yeah. Soon. Uh, let's move on here. Uh, Nathaniel, five-star review by chance? Uh, nothing yet. But if you want to give us a five-star review, you can do it in-app on Apple Podcasts. I will read said five-star review out on the podcast. You can say whatever you want. It's just got to be five stars. If it's not five stars, not reading it. Sorry about it. Um, But, yeah. Man, tough. Uh, It's a strict policy, but we do adhere to it. Of course. Uh, Well, listeners, the next review topic is going to be reminiscence. As we said earlier in the podcast, that's coming to HBO Max and theaters this Friday, August 20th. So either go out and see that or just sit on your couch and boot up HBO Max, whichever works best for you. Support your theaters if you can, of course, but I'm not going to make that call for you. Uh, I'm excited for this one, honestly. Like, looking at that trailer, it definitely seems interesting. I saw that it was coming out. We had a free week, and I thought, why not get a new movie on there? Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, so join us next week for that. We don't have any emails, but if you want to email us, you can contact us at backrowbanterpod at gmail.com for any questions, comments, concerns, grievances, anything of the sort that you want sorted out. Uh, send it our way, and maybe you'll get read out on the podcast. Uh, Ryan maybe. Foley has not written it in this week, so I'm assuming we're all good, Ryan, uh, after our little powwow last week. <laughs> Uh, but if you want to write in like Ryan did last week where he asked a question about the Green Knight, asked us about, you know, how, why we uh, like to watch movies and, and everything like that. We yeah, love that, that kind of stuff. Yeah, that was fun. We love that kind of stuff. If it's a good enough question, maybe we just make an episode about it, shorter episode, 20, 30 minutes, whatever it ends up being, and just kind of riff and have fun because that's what we like to do here at Back Row Banter. We like to banter, some would say. Yeah, I, I, I would think that's a safe assumption. Mm-hmm. Uh, so also share the podcast, share it with a friend, a family member, maybe an ex con that's you know somehow wound up as your partner, or if you're taken else's. hostage by a uh, a, a four star brigadier general, mm. and he's you know he's got a lot of time. Anytime there's a hostage situation, you're playing for time. So maybe yeah. just you know start episode one, say hey man, check this out, give it a thought. And uh, see how far that gets you. At least, what are we up? Sixty-four hours. Sixty-six. On Sixty. Here. Sixty-six hours at least. That, that's yeah. When well, these are like hour and a half, two-hour episodes, so, so you're looking at like a one ten hours. You got of days of content there. String yeah. it on out. Let them know. Let them know. And then follow the show. You can do so on on Twitter at Banter Row, on Instagram at Back Row Banter Pod, and on YouTube. It's just Back Row Banter. Please go subscribe to us there, if that's even if that's not your primary place of listening. We would really appreciate that. Blake Holder, where can the people find you at, my man? Um, Letterboxd, Blake Holder. I'll be on there logging stuff, as I keep reinforcing. I have been adamant on that. Now for probably going on about a month now. So, longest streaks thus far. Um, I'm going to keep it pushing on that. 
So cool. that's all we get. Um, we'll we'll go popcorn. We'll go popcorn, Adam. Hey, uh, you can find me on Twitter at h24. I uh, don't tweet a ton, but I, that's my primary place of social media. I'm on Twitter more than I should be. And maybe I'll start posting more if I get a few more followers and people one day hear what I have to say about whatever because, I don't know, why would you want my opinion? Who knows, but it's fun. Uh, To Letterboxd, you can find me there uh, at H. And that's pretty much it. The Popcorn Ty. Hey, guys. My name's Ty. Specifically Mango Ty. Uh, You can find me on uh, Twitch every now and then. Hopefully... uh, We'll get that going here pretty quick. I'm thinking about maybe even starting tonight. If Ooh. We have you know, just, like a little, just like a little hour, hour and a half maybe. Who knows? Uh, so, yeah. Okay. That's uh, twitch.tv forward slash ultra bajo, E-L-T-R-A-B-A-J-O-87. And uh, Tyler Vidalis, that's uh, Instagram, Letterboxd, and Twitter, V-I-D-A-L-E-S. He's got them all, folks. He's got them all. You can find... don't know how he got Tyler Vidalis on all of them. (laughs) Uh, You can find me on Twitter and Letterboxd at N.S. Gingrich. You can find me on Instagram at NathanielG92. You can follow my other podcast, Sandpiper Tapes, where all good podcasts are sold. Season 2 coming soon. That's all. And that's it. Adam, get us on out of here, homie. Well, that's going to do it here for episode 66, The Rock. Join us next week for reminiscence, reminiscence, reminiscence. That that's, feels like a word that should be echoed like that. Could be. If only I had the sound effect to do so. Ah, that would be fun. Maybe we'll work on that. Oh, well, anyway, join us next week. Thank you guys for joining us today. And uh, have a good one. We'll be RB. Hey, everyone. Uh, you go on out there and you be excellent to each other. We'll be RB. Thanks for uh, stopping by. Make sure you uh, comment, like, subscribe, do your video, help us share and grow. We would greatly appreciate it. And uh, yeah, like I you know, like I say every pretty much every week, you know, just be good to people. And uh, you never know where they're at in their journey and their day. So just uh, be kind, pass that on, and uh, we'll be RB. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll follow up with Ty saying in terms of, of being good to people, and you just never know what people are going through. Um, anybody who's been on the internet today has probably seen what's going on in Afghanistan. So, um, prayers to kind of that side of the world as they're going through, um, some pretty interesting things over there. So, um, you realize how fortunate you are when you start to see clips and things of that nature going on. Um, cause it's always, um, could always be worse. So that's it. On a lighter note, today is also Young Thug's birthday. So anybody who listens to Young Thug, the rapper, please go stream some of his music today. Happy birthday. And we'll be RB. Favorite fruit, fellas? Mm, mango or pineapple? Uh, I was going to say raspberry or pineapple. Great answer. I usually go pineapple. But I love yeah. fruit, so I can I'm go with, with so many. Yeah, I'm with Ty on the mangoes. I do like pineapples a lot, though. I think pineapple may sneaky be top three for me. Love for pineapple. sure. Not big on raspberries, though, Nathaniel. You know, I think I'm going to have to give those a, a shot. I like that like in my smoothies and stuff. Oh yeah, man. There's they're my favorite for all that kind of stuff. Oh, I just like you to can just eat just straight raspberries. Yeah, like right out the. Or like what you do is like you get if you want like a like a decent thing, you get a bunch of raspberries and then uh, just do whipped cream on them and just have that as like a dessert. Mm. Okay, I, I can't do the whipped cream, but I might be able to try that out. Are you like lactose? Is that a thing? No, I'm just just. Don't like whipped cream. Like a six year old. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you don't even six, like whipped cream. I feel like six year olds love whipped cream. <laughs> no. I then don't. here's what you do that, instead. That picky, huh? You do you do raspberries and you get some strawberries and then you just do a little chocolate syrup on top. Okay. I can I can do chocolate covered strawberries. Not my favorite, but I'll eat them. I'll definitely eat them. That's like a nice like holiday season type thing, you know? 
No, I love strawberries. Those are good ones too. You like strawberries over mangoes? You haven't said mangoes, Nathaniel. That's <laughs> I like mangoes. They're just the, and like I respect them. They're legends of the game, and I will never turn down a mango. But if you like give me a, a go-to thing, I just don't think I've had them enough. You know, mm. like I, I immediately go to like the ones that I grew up with. So like pineapples and raspberries, definitely. Okay. Like right. Yeah. There. But I respect mangoes. Fair. And would you go with Adam? Pineapple is usually my go-to, but you know I, I like love that a good, answer. I love a good peach. Love a good tangerine. Mm. Love a good apple. Love a good raspberry. I, like, I could keep going. I love fruit, man. Mm, peaches. Fruit. I can't. I can't do peaches, peaches. man. Peaches are underrated. Peach, yeah, man. Peach pie. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You guys like dragon fruit? Don't know that I've had enough of it, to be honest with you. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever had it, like, outside of a smoothie. It's mm. uh, it's incredibly unpredictable. I've had really, really good ones, and I've had really bad ones. Yeah, everyone I know has kind of said the same thing, Ty. Isn't it very, like, um, like seedy? It's wrong? it's kind of like part of the kiwi, as far as okay. like how, like how many seeds are in there. Well, I do like right, kiwi right, right. too. 